throat, O oh, throbbing heart, and I sing uselessly, uselessly all the night. O oh, past, O oh, happy life, O oh, songs of joy in the air and the woods over fields, loved, 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 loved. But my mate, no more, no more with me. We two, together, no more. Now, I find it amazing that the word decoy gets used one time in all Lisa Grass and it's here, right? Don't be decoy. It's, a, it's an amazing um, way to, to, to read Lisa Grass just ask. What, what are the only times words get used? Again, the whistle of the wind is not my voice. Fluttering, fluttering, the shadows of leaves. Again, shadows make us think of uh, Republic 7. And of course, I told you about leaves of grass, right? It's genius. The darkness in vain. I'm sick, I'm sorrowful, the brown halo, we're back to it. The drooping upon the sea, of course, takes us to Song of Myself 5. The throbbing heart, and I sing uselessly, uselessly all the night. Again, the theodicy and the theodistic question. O oh, past, O oh, happy life. In other words, life is over. The song of joy is over. And of course, we're familiar with that poem, right? And then he uses five times the word loved. But, and maybe the saddest lines in all of Leaves of Grass. My mate no more, no more with me. We too together no more. Now, passages 8, 9, and 10 that we can work through now pretty quickly um, are going to build off of this. The aria, again, the, the, the power of the opera, sinking, all else continuing, the stars shining again here, all these ing words, the winds blowing, the notes of the bird, continuous echoing out of the cradle endlessly, continuous rocking, with angry moans, the fierce old mother incessantly moaning. We're going to get to the savage old mother, fierce old mother, and the crone here in a, in a little bit. On the sands of Pominock shore, gray and rustling, the yellow half moon enlarged, sagging down, drooping, the face of the sea almost touching, the boy ecstatic. Go back to Idolans to see his use of that word. With his bare feet, the waves, with his hair, the atmosphere dallying, we'll play this game with dalliance of, of, of the eagles. The love in the heart long pent from pent up baking rivers. Now loose, back to drooping. Now at last tumultuously bursting. You'll remember tumultuously used in Song of the Broad Axe number three. The aria's meaning, the ears, the soul, swiftly depositing the strange tears down the cheeks coursing. The colloquy there, the Trio, each uttering the the trio, of course, the 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 boy, the the bird, and, and the bard, the poet, right? The undertone. Now think about the way he loves to play games with words, as opposed to undertone, right? The undertone. The savage old mother incessantly crying again, endlessly, to the boy's soul's questions, sullenly timing some drowned secret, hissing. Um, his use of the word hissing when I heard at the close of day, and, and, and we're going to come back to this word several times, to the outsetting bar. Now we're going to start to see this movement. It's quite a remarkable movement. And at passage 9, to start with demon or bird, we immediately think about uh, Poe. Remember, Poe's Raven will be published 29th of January, 1845. It is a poem that Whitman and most readers of, of Whitman's day would have known. You'll remember prophet, still, or bird, or devil, right? Demon or bird, said the boy's soul. Is it indeed toward your mate you sing, or is it really to me? Now all of a sudden, the identification with the song, the symbolism now just takes off, and this poem becomes something beyond brilliant. For I, that was a child, my tongue's use sleeping, his poem Sleepers comes to mind. Now I have heard you, now in a moment. Notice the repetition of the word now, and in a moment, here's our epiphany, our artistic epiphany. I know what I am for. And again, we're back to that I am construction. I awake. And you'll remember that Thoreau says it in Walden uh, too. We've given full lectures on this, right? We must learn to reawaken and keep ourselves awake, not by mechanical aids, but by an infinite expectation of the dawn, which does not forsake us and us sound asleep. You'll remember this. I awake. And already a thousand singers, a thousand songs, of course, we heard thousand earlier, clearer, louder, and more sorrowful than yours. A thousand warbling echoes have started to life within me 
never to die. You'll remember that he says this at the conclusion of Song of Myself, Passage 1, hoping not to cease, right? Oh, and then we're going to get four quick O's. Oh, you singer solitary singing by yourself, projecting me. Oh, solitary me listening. By the way, this word projecting, go back and look at T.S. Eliot's Love Song of Jalford Prufrock, um, projected as in patterns on a screen. Projecting me, oh, solitary me listening, never more shall I cease perpetuating you. Uh, never more, of course, this never more makes us think about Poe's Raven one more time, right? Never more shall I escape, never more the reverberations, never more the cries of unsatisfied love be absent from me, never again leave me to be the peaceful child I was before, what there in the night by the sea, under the yellow and sagging moon. The messenger there aroused the fire, the sweet hell, maybe the Maybe, maybe two of the most interesting juxtaposed words in all of Leaves of Grass. The sweet hell within. The unknown want. The destiny of me. Hey, do you guys remember in Cabin Ships at Sea, oh, book, fulfill your destiny, and now here we're back to destiny. Oh, give me the clue. Go back to a spelling of the word clue in when I read the book. All of these lines are taking us back to the very beginning in the inscription section of the deathbed edition of Leaves of Grass. Notice he says, it lurks in the night here and then it's somewhere, just like perhaps. Oh, if I am to have so much, let me have more. And this is, I think, what the poet, what, what the poet longs for. And then we get to it. A word. Back to the Logos. I told you guys, he plays around with this idea because he's so comfortable with this idea of John 1, in the beginning was the word. A word then. For I will conquer it. Follow the use of the word conquer. Not just in this poem, but in Leaves of Grass. The word final, superior to all, subtle, sent up, and then notice the dash reminds us of Emily Dickinson. What is it? I listen. Are you whispering it and have been all the time? You see waves. Now we're going to get our final B, the brine, the C. Is that it from your liquid rhyme, rims and wet sands? And again, birth semen maybe being referenced here. The final passage, as we call it, 10. Where to answering the sea, delaying not, hurrying not, whispered me through the night and very plainly before daybreak. Remember in passage 46 of Song of Myself, this day before dawn, right? Lisp to me, only use of the word lisp in all of Lisa Grass. Lisp to me, the low and delicious word death. Um, now, this word delicious takes us back again to the very beginning. And again, death. Death, 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 five times repeated to obviously give our balance and make us think about Song of Myself 6. Hissing, melodious, used three times as well as drum taps, this word hissing. Neither like the bird, nor like my amorous child's heart, but edging near as privately from me, rustling at my feet, creeping fence, we're going to get to more creeping in a second, steadily up to my ears and laving me softly all over. Only use in leaves of grass of the, of the word laving is here. And then one more time, death, 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 death. Which I do not forget, and I think that's the key, right? Because the only sin for a poet is to forget. But fuse the song of my dusky demon and brother. Uh, do you remember this use of the word fuse? For him I sing fuse, uh, the uh, uh, important, you know, important laws, you remember this? Um, that he sang to me in the moonlight on Pominox Gray Beach with a thousand responsive songs at random, my own songs awakened from that hour and with them the key, the word, the logos, the key, the word up from the waves, the word of the sweetest song and all songs, that strong and, for the third time, delicious word, which creeping to my feet and then in parentheses, or like some old crone rocking the cradle, swathed in sweet garments, bending aside, and then the end of the parenthetics, the sea whispered me. By the way, crone only used one time in Leaves of Grass, and it's right here. I love that it's not the sea whispered to me, but rather the sea whispered me. Okay, what are we going to do with a set of lines like this at 2A? Well, I think that what he's arguing is that all great art is born of pain and suffering. Sweet hell. At 2B, of course, the voices are amazing and the rhythms are amazing. And his special use of words is just, to me, quite remarkable as well. Undertone versus undertow. It's just, it's an amazing set of lines. 
At 3A in our comparisons here, well, um, I think in many ways we're reading this poem to get ready for lilacs. We'll come back to a whole lot of some of these ideas when we hit lilacs. The Rose Walden I've mentioned. Think, take a look at Emily Dickinson's Success is Counted Sweetest for Those Who Ne'er Succeed to Comprehend a Nectar Requires Source Need. Um, I, I've given a full lecture. I, we've mentioned T.S. Eliot's Dry Salvages. Song of Myself, Passage 6. Just go back and look at those last lines from Song of Myself, Passage uh, 6. To, to be reminded of how he has played this game with us before. A child said, what is the grass fetching it to me with full hands? How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. All um, goes onward and outward. Nothing collapses and to die is different from what anyone supposed and luckier. At 3B, this is a compelling poem and I think it's one you want to Go, go for a long walk to the park and then just, you know, sit out there and read it out loud several times before you can answer a question maybe like this one. Do you think it is true that death and its threat is what makes life so sweet? That is to say, the only reason swinging at the park is fun is because the van's there and somebody always told us when we were a child we had to go to the van. We didn't want to go to the van, but we knew we had to go to the van. And it somehow made the swinging so much sweeter. I mean, you'll remember, right, in the Odyssey that um, Odysseus and Athena have that interesting exchange where he's like, he's mad at her because she took, you know, 20 years out of his life. And she's like, what is, what is the problem? What is 20 years? Well, he says, yeah, you're immortal. So you don't know about aging. And to that degree, you don't really understand love because you can't really love if you don't understand that someday it must go away. And this poem captures that in powerful ways, I believe. What are your guys' thoughts about it? Well, from here, believe it or not, we move on to a poem that some will say captures just as powerfully human emotions as I ebbed. Another truly amazing poem. I hope you're being challenged by our talks with Walt. Thank you.